Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys 1-6 scale X-Men figure unboxing and review. Today we're taking a look at Wolverine based off his appearance in Days of Future Past. Specifically in the past, this is the 1973 version. Now I got mine at a discount from Pop Collectibles. As always, do your own research, make sure you are comfortable before buying. I have popped the link to their site in the description below, along with the discount code Justin's Collection for 5% off your order if you do decide to buy from them. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new Hot Toys review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, going with this gold colour scheme and it being metallic and glossy, gorgeous. Got this massive X front and centre, deluxe version in metallic foil up top and a special edition sticker, couple of images of the figure himself, and a silhouetted image of Logan walking towards us. Then down below, the Days of Future Past logo. This box is pretty chonky. That's because this is the deluxe version. If you get the normal version with the standard base, then it should be a little bit slimmer, more normal Hot Toys box size. We have this swirl on the side, more of that X spilling over the edge, and another Days of Future Past logo. And then around the back, warnings and legal information with a very subtle X printed behind it. It is more tricky to spot on camera than it is in person, and that's because the box is metallic, so all of this artwork is a little bit shiny. When you shift the box around, the light just dances on the surface. So we're only one layer deep and we've already hit the clam tray. That means no slip cover, which is unfortunate because I reckon some of the best artwork is on the Hot Toys slip covers, actually featuring the figures themselves. Fingers crossed that's not a sign of things to come. Hot Toys, a little bit of extra artwork before we get to the figure when we're unboxing it. It's never a bad thing. First in-hand impressions for Logan. So far, so good. Hang on a second. This is the controversial head sculpt everyone's been going on about. Okay. What we are going to do now, though, is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first, which is an absolutely massive diorama style base. Down below it's pretty simple with the black edge and the step up to it, but it is chonky so it is going to give him an added height boost in the display. Now the nameplate is well detailed with the X-Men Days of Future Past logo in high gloss, same thing with the blue X and then this textured background. But there's a typo with his name unfortunately. They are sending out replacement stickers though, and it does still have the exact same detail as this one does, so you can just stick it over the top if you so choose, or if you want to commemorate the typo, you can just leave it as is. Up top, there is this almost flocked feeling astroturf surface. I do appreciate the fact that they've used multiple different shades of green. It doesn't look like that cheap and nasty fake grass. This actually looks pretty realistic, especially from a distance. Now the diorama stuff is made of that slightly softer vinyl. Still well detailed, there's still the dry brushing and rust work and multiple chunks of rubble here and there, plus these pieces of rebar sticking out, but it's now more durable thanks to that vinyl. All of these bits and pieces are soft enough that even if you grab them, they are not going to break off. This thing is sturdy as. And it's still well textured, like I said, with washers in the crevices, especially this concrete bit up top that's massive with the three Wolverine claws scratched into the surface. I love the way this thing looks. The only thing that I don't love is that the crotch grabber is off to the side a little. If only this chunk of rubble was removable, then you could have put the crotch grabber in the middle. And then if you removed the crotch grabber, you could have put the chunk of rubble over the top. So you could have gone either with or without the crotch grabber. Right now, if you take it off, there is going to be a massive hole there, so it does spoil the illusion. I just think a swappable rock would have been the right call, in this instance. For some unknown reason, Hot Toys decided to make it really complicated with this Wolverine. There are four different versions in total. The first one is the normal one, then there's the normal special edition that comes with the Sentinel arm, then there's the deluxe version, and the deluxe version special edition. Four. Not sure why. Now the sentinel arm looks good, it's purple up top, translucent plastic and gunmetal. You can also remove the barrels if you so choose. I did see some pics of him stabbing his bone claws through the gatling gun piece, so if you want to do that, you totally can. 
I like the detail here. There's weathering everywhere. There's some speckling of dirt and grime. And it's textural too. You can feel all of this weathering on the surface. They've also included a swap out black shirt and these little foam sock pieces. I won't tell you what they do right now, just know that you do get them and they're meant to be paired with his black shirt. We will of course try this on him a little bit later. Hot Toys, welcome to 2023. I am so glad you're trying out some seamless forearms. Because you clearly know how to do it. I mean, the vein work, the hair on the surface, the bone claws actually looking like they're jutting out of his knuckles. These things are just so freaking lush and I cannot wait to pop them on him. I just wish we got more swap out seamless forearms. We only get one set with one gesture, just the closed fists with the claws sticking out of them. Some open palm hands with the claws. I would have liked to have seen those too. Speaking of claws, lastly, some regular fists with the claws sticking out that aren't seamless, still with some great detail on the back with the hairs and it's a little bit of speckling of some gloss that looks like sweat and washes in the crevices for the bone claws which are done in this almost beige colour, so yes, they do genuinely look like bone. And they are really prickly. When you're switching these out onto him, try not to do it like this. Trust me, as you can see, I've already spiked myself. You do get these, regular closed fists, and some open palm hands. What we are going to do now, though, is get Wolverine himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. This is a return to form for Hot Toys. They made so many Wolverines back in the day. This is like their bread and butter. And I can already tell we are in for a treat. If there's one character Hot Toys knows how to make in 6 scale, it's frickin' Wolverine. This guy, even from a distance, looks visually interesting. Yes, it's a civilian look, and they can be hit and miss. They can come across boring. I don't think this does. The outfit is screen accurate and it's made of real materials. We'll discuss that in just a second. And the body is proportionate. He fills out the outfit really well. But the head sculpt might just be my favourite thing here. Even though I know people are dubious about it. The blogger pics sometimes tell a completely different story to what it looks like in hand and on camera. But this time, I actually think that's what's happened. Up close and personal, kicking things off with Wolverine's head sculpt. I mean, wow, I love this head sculpt. A lot of people don't, and I understand that there is a difference between the prototype and the final product, but I don't think this looks any worse, to be totally honest with you. His jawline does come across a touch wider, but that is not enough to throw off the likeness. I can still see Hugh Jackman from every angle. He's got this exaggerated furrowed brow, so he looks a little bit mean. His mouth is open, and you can see his teeth picking up the light. That's a really nice attention to detail. And he's got this dangly piece of rubbery plastic hair down the front, which is movie accurate. Some people said they didn't like it, but it is supposed to be there, actually. They've even feathered the five o'clock shadow into the sculpted hair for the beard. And continued the hair down his neck, which I don't think I've ever seen from Hot Toys before. There is a little bit of a gap where this hair piece is plugged in, but from a distance, you can't really see it. All I can see is Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. I'm really impressed with this head sculpt. A lot of people will say that the Days of Future Past battlesuit version is superior, and we will of course do a comparison to that a little bit later. I think this is their strongest head sculpt for Hugh Jackman to date. Again, just my opinion. Don't shoot the messenger if you don't like it, that's totally fine. My favourite thing about the sculpt though has to be all of the skin texture. Hugh Jackman is getting a little bit older, so he has a lot more detail on his face. You've got the sculpted skin texture. You've got the rosiness to the cheeks. You've also got all of the crow's feet and the frown lines and the wrinkles. It just makes for a super realistic head sculpt. As much as I want to keep filming this head sculpt, we do have to move on to the outfit and the body. They've even gone so far as to add some painted chest hair underneath all of the layers and sculpt in skin texture and musculature where in reality, you're probably not going to see all of this stuff too much. To me, he looks very natural and proportionate. He fills out the outfit beautifully. They could have easily gone the other way, though. With their The Wolverine figure back in the day, they shrunk down the body, making him look a little bit too skinny without everything on, so that when you put all of the layers over the top of the body, he didn't look too big and bulky. They've done that here as well in only one area and they've included something that you can use to fix it, which we'll discuss when we mix up the outfit options. Speaking of the outfit, is it just me or 
does this pay homage to the X-Men animated series Logan look? The casual appearance with the brown leather jacket, the jeans, and the checkered shirt in the show, whereas here it's a peacock print shirt, very 70s Logan. There are some pockets around the front, it's made of this thin, lightweight fabric, and you can adjust it by tucking it down lower if you find the collar is sitting a bit too high. Plus, the press studs are tucked in really nicely around this front flap so they don't stick out around the side. And you can split the collar open if you'd like to reveal his tank top underneath. But over the top, by far my favourite thing about the outfit, the real leather jacket. All of this leather grain isn't fake, it's actual genuine leather. And you can smell it too, as soon as you open the box, it just slaps you right across the face with that genuine leather smell, and I am so here for it. It's also wired and lined, so you can get more dynamic with the posing and dial in the jacket to make it look like it's billowing in the wind or moving out of the way as Wolverine is about to slash someone. To do that, he's going to need his claws. I have opted for the non-seamless forearm versions for the jacket look just because trying to wedge these seamless forearms through the sleeves at their widest point is going to be a massive challenge. I don't think it's worth the hassle, especially considering the jacket sleeve comes down over the wrist peg anyway, so you're not necessarily getting the benefit of having the seamless forearms on. Now, if you bend the arm, then yes, the jacket sleeve will ride up, but you can futz with it a little to get it to sit down over that wrist peg. If you're not a massive fan of the bone claws and you have any of the other Wolverine figures by Hot Toys, then you can, of course, switch out the hands for some metal claws. I personally will be going with the bone claws because it is movie accurate, but just to show that they are compatible, they pop right on the wrist peg, and yeah, now that I'm seeing it, this is a pretty cool look as well. Okay, we've gone back to the bone claws. As much as I was tempted to leave these on for the rest of the video because they looked sick, they're not included and they're just not accurate. Now, his belt is well detailed. Even though it is made of two separate pieces, the belt itself is pleather with these little X's over the top. I think that's an X-Men Easter egg. Then the belt buckle is sculpted plastic with some detail around the edges and straight through the middle. Even though it is a different material and a different sheen, I don't mind that because often belt buckles will be different material to the belts they sit on. Now his pants are just blue denim trousers. They've got this realistic denim weave over the top and some excess fabric in the high traffic areas, such as behind his knees and down below for his ankles. That is quite realistic to how jeans wear. They will get a touch loose in your joints. But also they allow for greater range of motion when it comes to posing. Having some bagginess back here for the joints to move, never a bad thing. Especially when it doesn't come at the cost of his silhouette, which it doesn't. The legs are fully padded all the way down, and they look nice and smooth. They've even gone so far as to use fake pockets around the front to keep it as smooth as possible. Whereas around the back, real pockets, and there's all that yellow contrasting stitching. Then coming down here for his boots, they are outstanding. These might just be the best boots I've ever seen from Hot Toys. It's a really nice level of texture on them. You've got the stitching sculpted in and washers, plus some dry brushing for the highlights. Then on the underside, some fully sculpted tread. But if you're wondering what this guy looks like with his black shirt on, because I certainly am, let's give that a go. So it's worth noting that if you decide you prefer the peacock print shirt instead of the black one for this particular look with the seamless forearms and the sleeves rolled up, you can do that with that shirt as well. It's got the exact same press stud for the little bit down below. You unbutton it, you roll the sleeve up, you pop the forearm on, job done. It's just that with this particular look, the black shirt to me reads a little bit more badass. So if I am going to rock the seamless forearms, which I'm tempted to, I don't think I'm going to go with the peacock print shirt, as 70s specific as it is. Speaking of the seamless forearms, a crazy amount of detail. And now we don't have the ugly wrist pegs visible. The stock ones, yeah, they look like this underneath the sleeves. So I don't think it's a great idea to rock these instead of the seamless ones with the sleeves rolled up. It is a touch challenging to remove the stock ones. Just bend them backwards and they should pop off for you. If you struggle, then maybe apply a little bit of heat, but I don't think that works super well with this hard brittle plastic. It'll work better with these sculpted ones because these are more of that softer hand material that Hot Toys likes to use. 
Now, I'm not sure, like I said, if I will be going with this just because I prefer the jacket look. So the seamless forearms are rendered useless when you have the jacket on. Oh yeah, absolutely. Rocking the dual seamless forearms with the black shirt? I don't mind if I do. Now that I'm seeing him fully assembled, I know I keep saying that I won't do something, then when I see it actually on him, I just walk back on that decision because this, this is badass. Having the seamless forearms just adds so much realism. I'm hoping that Hot Toys do continue to do the seamless thing because now that I've seen it on one of their figures, I want it on all of them going forward. Also, when you have him in this look, just be careful with the buttons. As you can see, one of mine in the pocket has already gone missing. And unlike the peacock print shirt, you don't get spare buttons for this one. They're not stitched on for some reason. They're just glued on. And like I said, they have a habit of falling off on you. I did promise to do this and I'm a man of my word. So here is the new Days of Future Past Wolverine on the left and the original battle suit version on the right. Hugh Jackman was supposed to be... A little bit older, although then again Wolverine doesn't age, so I don't know why they made him look older in the future, but he's got the grey hair and he's got a less exaggerated hairstyle. Whereas for the 70s look on the left, much more exaggerated and the dangling piece of hair down the front is a lot longer. But you can see that the years haven't necessarily been kind to the original. It still looks good from a sculpt perspective, but the detail is just so much better on the new one. There is way more skin texture. The likeness is strong on both, I still have to give it to the new one. For those curious about head swaps, yes you can, here we have the original Days of Future Past Wolverine head sculpt on the new body. I reckon it looks too small here, something about it proportionately just doesn't work with this particular body. Oh, going the other way though, the new head sculpt on the old body, oh this looks absolutely awesome, I'm so tempted now to pick up another one of these head sculpts, have the greys painted in and then display it on this body because the likeness upgrade, the detail improvement, is just next level. I'm thinking that Hot Toys, maybe it's time we get a 2.0 of this guy using this head sculpt. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the entire Hot Toys X-Men Days of Future Past line. And no, I wish I was joking, but instead of making any of the other characters from the movie like Magneto and Professor X, either the older or younger versions, Mystique, Beast, even Quicksilver, who had some absolute banger moments in the movie, they decided, nah, just Logan. I'm okay with that though, because Wolverine is my favourite X-Men character, and I love Hugh Jackman, so right now I'm satisfied, but in the future I would like to see more characters from Days of Future Past, because that movie is one of my favourite X-Men films. Now, Wolverine on the left is ever so slightly taller than Wolverine on the right. It's not something that you can maybe see on camera, in person it is more obvious. And I think it's down to the slightly taller hair, although it could also be the ankle extenders or the boots. These two I think complement each other really well. I like having the evolution of characters in the display. Older versions, younger versions, civilian versions, and battle slash hero costume versions. This is all of that. You get a younger one in a civilian attire, and you get an older one in this full superhero suit. And you can switch the head sculpts around, mix and match to your heart's content. Going over articulation, I wanted to leave his jacket on for this, just because this is him at his most limited. Which means when you take it off, you're going to get a much greater range of motion. Starting off with his head sculpt, it's on a fixed rubbery neck with a double ball peg inside. Looking forward to there, looking up to there, swivel and pivot side to side. His arms will go up to there, relatively unrestricted actually, Going forward and back, this is slightly more restricted. Butterfly joint at the shoulder, it hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow, going just past 90 with the jacket on. With it off, you'll get even more range. Then for the wrist peg, it's a hinge and swivel. As for the torso, crunching forward to there, going back to there, swivel and pivot side to side. His upper thighs are padded, and that will get in the way, unfortunately. His legs go forward to there, and trust me, I am really fighting them. Going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh. Ratcheted, double bend at the knee, going past 90, and a double ball peg for the ankles. Because the boots are quite wide at the top, you do get a decent range of motion. Going forward and back, swivel, as well as a little bit of ankle tilt. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing, as gorgeous as this display base is, it's going to be the nameplate. This, to me, just shows an absolute lack of care. 
to have not picked up that there's a typo in Wolverine, that is a total disaster. At the very least, they are issuing replacement stickers for the front of the base. The second annoying thing, as much of a win as it is to get a genuine leather jacket, I don't think the belt is. Hot Toys don't specifically mention that the belt is made of real leather, and I feel like if it was, they would be mentioning it. So unfortunately, I think they've still managed to sneak a little bit of pleather in here. The third annoying thing, we are really grasping at straws at this point. I have never complained that something is too detailed. But I'm about to, just bear with me on this one. So in the movie, the Sentinels are made of plastic so that Magneto can't control them. He eventually, of course, gets around that by embedding a bunch of pieces of rebar into them. In 6 scale, Hot Toys have added all of this extra silver dry brushing, which looks great, but just isn't accurate. Same thing with the silver chipping for this purple panel. It's supposed to be made of plastic Hot Toys, and it is, so let it look like it's made of plastic. The first cool thing, the real leather jacket. As soon as you open the box, the leather smell just hits you, and I love it. The jacket feels nice and soft and supple, the leather grain texture is real because it's actual leather, and the jacket is wired, which is just a nice bonus. The second cool thing is that they include these padded bicep pieces. That just means that they're paying attention to proportions. They want this guy to look as good as possible in both outfit options. The third cool thing, I love it when Hot Toys experiment. They tried out the seamless forearms for the first time here, and I call these a massive success. They're just flexing on us. I mean, look at the vein work, the hair that's sculpted in, and the paint applications over the top. Not to mention the bone claws. These things just look so darn good. Wrapping up on the Days of Future Past 1973 version of Wolverine by Hot Toys. Going into this, I was really worried because the head sculpt with the prototype was perfect. It was so freaking good. And then the blogger pics came out and it didn't look as good, to put it nicely. Now that I've seen it in hand, let's just talk about the head sculpt first. I love it. I think it looks like Hugh Jackman, and I think they nailed how much detail they packed into it. The hair, skin texture, the vein work, the little dangling piece around the front for the fringe, all of that I love, and it fits in proportion to the body, and no, I don't think it's a massive step down from the prototype. Everything else is just icing on the cake. The proportions look very natural, the outfit, accurate, and you have multiple options, plus you have the real leather jacket, so that's a huge win, and the seamless forearms for the first time from Hot Toys. They used to make a bunch of Wolverine figures back in the day, so it makes sense to me that this is the character they picked to just experiment with a little. And going forward, I want more seamless forearms from Hot Toys. They have shown that they can pack in so much detail on those darn things, and they make this guy look way more realistic, because ditching the wrist pegs, I think, is the way forward. Yes, you lose a little bit of posability with the wrists, I'm totally fine with sacrificing that for the realism, as long as they also include the articulated one, so you have the best of both worlds. He also comes with this absolutely monstrous diorama display base, which is completely unnecessary and superfluous. That doesn't mean I don't love it, I adore the darn thing, and I can't wait to pop it in the display as my Days of Future Past centerpiece. Yes, the battle suit is more visually interesting, and some people might say he's the superior of the two Wolverines. This one, to me, is just iconic Days of Future Past Wolverine. I am so happy with how he turned out. Now, I got mine at a discount from Pop Collectibles. As always, do your own research, make sure you are comfortable before buying. I have popped the link to their site in the description below, along with the discount code Justin's Collection for 5% off your order if you do decide to buy from them. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button. If you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.